All right, Adam! Hey guys, how's it going everybody? Hungry. We are so excited. We are trying something new today. We are doing our first ever baking edition. It's We're gonna... following Sally's recipe. Yep, yeah. For all of this, the actual recipe is from Sally's Baking Addiction. Dot com. Uh, so, and, but we are doing some basic funfetti homemade cupcakes today. We've got our oven preset to 350. Mm -hmm. We Gabby has prepared all the dry ingredients. Normally, we're not this prepared in baking, but we wanted to make sure because it is not entertaining for you to watch us do this. Shall we commence? Yes. Butter needs to be melted. Butter. Yep. Butter needs to be melted. Which is great because. I always struggle with recipes that um, you have to wait for softened butter. Yep. There's got to be some trick, actually. I wonder if there is a good trick for having softened butter. It's really good. It's Sally... letting it out way in advance. I know, but that's planning. That's, the trick. that's so hard. The, the trick is easy. Like right now, guys, we have butter trying to soften for um, the yep. icing, and you need it softened. Like you can't just melt it, but it's really tough because then you have to wait for it. You have oh, to I just melt it. Be prepared. No, you don't melt the butter for the icing. All Are the you time. being serious? Yeah. Or I don't, I don't purely melt it, but I do soften it in the microwave. Anyway, in this bowl here, we have our dry ingredients of flour, baking powder, baking soda, and salt. Now we put this on the side here and we've got some butter. Now before we put these together, we need to whisk in this sugar so that way it'll be nice and gritty. And then we've got to chill it in the refrigerator for one minute. We've got a thing with whisks in this house. We have one whisk. And Adam, what do you like to use that whisk for? Eggs. Yeah. In the morning. So then today we are going to be whoa. using a fork. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Actually, we whoa. have another whisk. This is turning personal. <laughs> Actually, we do have I a I didn't know this was a pet peeve of yours. <laughs> that I well, if he uses the whisk early. And then we can't use it for this, but we do have another whisk. What the heck is this? I did not know I was being turned on in this. <laughs> you, I'm going to pour in the yep. butt tub. Dump the it sugar, in. the sugar. Guys, it's terrifying how much sugar is going into this. It is not terrifying. It is. It's needed. It's okay. We're going to use our whisk. Yep. Whisk it in. And then, now make sure you get that. It's going to be a gritty texture according to Sally's Baking Addiction, or so, Addiction.com. There you are. So, Adam, when you've done this. Yeah. There you are. To the camera, to our adoring fans. Thank you. This is the applause moment. Ooh, it feels gritty indeed. That, now, we need to put that in the uh, the refrigerator for one do minute. Do you always do that? When you make this recipe? Do you question Sally? I've never made this recipe. Of That's course. wild. If Sally tells me to do something, I do it. All right. It's like listening to a parent, but more important. Why do you think it needs to go in the fridge? I'm not here to question the power of Sally. Timer is on. One minute. Okay. What's going to happen next? Um... Yogurt, milk, and vanilla. Very nice. Yep, into this, into the um, the cup here. So we're gonna bring them over. Well, it's gonna go into the butter. Yeah, into that mixture. Okay. The yogurt. Uh, We've got the wet ingredients already measured, except for the um, vanilla, Adam. So you can do tea two teaspoons of vanilla. Absolutely. When thank you. Time. Chef, thank you. Chef, yes. Now we also want to talk to you about proper behavior in the kitchen here. The head chef should always be addressed as chef yes mm. or chef whatever. Because think about it, if I start rambling off and obviously there's two of us here, so this does negate much of what I'm saying because there's obviously only one person, <laughs> but you need to say who you're addressing with the activity that you want conducted, if right. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So Gabby and I have long gone through this. We both are head chefs at different times. Oh, of course. But Gabby, when I am head chef, refuses to address me correctly. It is time. Moving on. Chef, thank you. See, I address Ooh. Gabby. It's made a gelatinous that? Form. Two teaspoons, darling? Two teaspoons, please. Two teaspoons. Two teaspoons. We're going to stir it in. One. Stir Two. it in. And then we're going to get the milk, please. Chef, yes. The milk and... The sour cream. We guys, we are using sour cream instead of yogurt. Yeah, we are, we have made a substitution like of the that. recipe. That. You do that. I'll grab the egg. The egg. I guys, I really like sour cream. Like I really think it's such a cool ingredient. That it really is. It brings out the sourness of the cream. Mmm. I just think it's got a cool texture. I like how it can be used for so many things. Like the fact that you can use it for a dip, like a savory. Or you can also use it for a dessert. I just think that's cool. It's 
quite potent. It's quite powerful. Also, I tend to, when I have to scrape things, I scrape for a long time. Yeah, Gabby is determined to always save everything. I might have sprayed myself with sour cream. It's okay. What? What? I'm going to stir this. Mm -hmm. You're going to stir it? That, excellent. You're going to stir. Oh, I'll start getting ready our cupcake tray. Sally also always says to use like room temperature ingredients because she says they mix better. That's another really great tip, but it's really hard to do that sometimes because then like, you know, usually I would just pull out the milk when it's time for the milk to go in the recipe, mm. you know, but really you should have it out a little bit so it can get room temperature. So try That's, to do that sometimes, you know, if we, I think of it. We all want to be Sally. I think that's. That's the thing. Now, do we want to use the big She's cupcake cool containers or the small ones? Ooh. What do you think? This is a chef decision right now. Well, I thought you're chef. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm going to go. This is such a big decision. I know. This is overwhelming. We both have small. COVID. Small. We both have COVID. It's very difficult to make this <laughs> We're not being sarcastic. Yep. It's very difficult to make these basic choices. We're overwhelmed. Yep. But All right. Now. These are so petite. With petite. Now I'm going to slowly mix in the dry ingredients until oh, no so lumps remain. These are so small. Are no. they too small, Adam? Have we chosen wrong? There's no such thing as a wrong choice in the kitchen. I, that, that is an absolute lie. There are wrong <laughs> choices in the kitchen. We all know it here. Um, take a look how small this is. That's I think a, that's a nice size. What type of cupcakes are we going to be eating? <laughs> here? So, never going to be able to satiate. I'm going to eat 50 of these things. We're going to eat 20 of these. We did not double the batter. Was that an error? No. I don't know. Clearly, Adam is already wanting more, so that's good. No, I mean, it, I'm just saying the size of these cupcake containers are going to have us like have 50 cupcakes instead of a dozen. Now, you know, I always really struggle with when, how do you know if you've overmixed? Because sometimes these recipes say don't overmix, and I'm like, how am I supposed to know that? Actually, I bet there's some kind of gadget that tells you that. that. I don't know of it, though. So if anybody knows of a gadget that tells you if you've overmixed, Maybe it would be a timer. Or if you want to sell us the rights. Uh, so we Oh, if you invent it. We will gladly buy it from you. Yes, I will actually. Because I tried to make cupcakes before. Mm -hmm. Yellow cake is really where I've run into this problem. And can anyone guess what it tastes like when you overmix? Yellow cake? Yeah. What is it? Instead taste? of a cupcake, it tastes like cornbread. So I had made these beautiful yellow cupcakes. They were actually very visibly beautiful. Uh -huh. My family was very encouraging about it. And then we ate them, and I had made chocolate buttercream icing, also yummy, not like, you know, the best, but pretty good. Because I didn't use like the unsweetened Dutch cocoa, I just used like hot chocolate mix. But it was still really good. And we were enjoying it. And then after like the second bite, someone was like, does it taste, did you, did you put corn in these cupcakes? Mm. And I was like, no, of course I didn't put corn in the cupcake. And then I realized they legit taste like cornbread. So then later someone came over and they were eating them. They're like, mm, why did you put chocolate icing on the cornbread muffins? Oh. oh. The corn muffins. Oh gosh. Well, Gabby, this is a safe place. That being said, I don't want to overmix these, but she says to slowly incorporate the... Dry ingredients, which is what I've been doing, so. Gabby, yeah, I have horrible news. We might be low on sprinkles. Oh, this is crazy, guys. Oh, Adam's made such a good mixture of them. Uh, I mean, I used all the sprinkles we had left. That's okay. But there's a moral to this story, kids. No sprinkles are going on top. That's what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. we're going to be sprinkling. All the sprinkles are going to go inside but, you know, the bathtub. I, I often feel like it's unnecessary to have sprinkles on top. I could just be compensating. See, right I now. like them on top because it's a nice little crunch. Interesting. You see, it's about the texture in that case. You see, I don't like them distracting me as much um, from the. Um, I don't really know what they do it for us in the cake, actually. They add little pops of sugar and color. It's a playful pot da da. All right, so when the sprinkles get added. That's right. Pot da da. <laughs> Shall I? Um, okay. She says don't over mix them once the sprinkles. Add. We have to slowly stir in the sprinkles because you have to they fold them bleed. in. Gabby, just fold them in. I'll fold them in. 
Oh, an interesting color assortment. Indeed. I remember the first time I did it, it uh, did this. I used non-pareil sprinkles, which is, as you would know from reading the recipe on Sally's bakingaddiction.com. Not sponsored yet. Uh, you will find that it turns into a disgusting color because they bleed very quickly. <laughs> uh, we were actually made them in Gabby's goddaughter. Did I you thought spray, they, my love? I already sprayed. What? I sprayed the inside. Wow, well, wow, fantastic. Yep, yep. Uh, I thought that Gabby, uh, these uh, children, these uh, would not like it because it looked different. Fortunately, it was purple enough that they enjoyed it and thought it was a purple cupcake. They loved it. They yeah, said, I was very worried about it. I haven't made purple cupcakes. Very worried. I thought the kids were going to say it looked like ah! poop and uh, we're not going to eat it. So I know. It could have gone that way. It, it, yeah, it, it really, yet again, you're working with like six and seven year olds here. It really could go anyway. You never it, know what they're going to like. Yeah, yeah. Eat, one day it could be great. The next day you could be shot down. I think they said they thought that it was unicorn cupcakes that you had made, right? Yes, yes. Unicorn cupcakes, of course. They were purple. So we, we, of course, played into that. Of course. Naturally, naturally. Pretend that Adam had meant that. So now how much am I supposed to fill in the cupcake, Adam? Uh, that's about right where you should be because it's going to inflate a little beyond that. Okay. So I, I think you're in a good spot. Too much over, it'll start, uh, it'll raise too high in there. All right. Tricky. That, Ooh, I got a bright pink sprinkle in there. That looks really cool. That is that. adorable. I'm not really sure I'm a fan of the green cup or the green sprinkles. I'm sorry to hear that. Just, I feel like sprinkles should only be like, Bright pink, bright blue. Oh. Really pretty colors like that. Mm. But maybe you like green. You like green a lot, so. I do like green. So, we have a lot of butter on the counter still. Um, our icings. Three quarters. We might have too much butter on the counter, but. Better to have too much softened butter. We should tell them about the fiasco that used to happen because of our oxidized mixer. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, we used to uh, wash our attachment for our, um, what's it? The thing. For our stand mixer. For our stand mixer. Oh, no, Gabby, yeah, you're absolutely correct about the butter here, by okay. the way. I'm going to start preparing, if that's please, okay. Please, please, and thank uh, you. We used to put one of these uh, for our KitchenAid in the dishwasher, and it would cause oxidation on that. That's a big no-no, yeah. people. Learn from our mistake yeah we were sinners it was a true error it was very irritating because we went to bake multiple times thought we we like rinsed it off and then we went to bake and like again my issue with i had waited for that butter to soften okay i had waited and then i started doing it put the butter and the sugar together and started mixing it and it is all gray oh the pain oh. i was so mad i had to pull out other butter Oh, guys, I wasted butter that day. Oh, I hate I, wasting butter. I lost a whole batch of bread once today. I think it was a double portion, too. Oh, God. Yeah, it was. It was yeah, double. mine was a double, too. Yeah, so yeah. that was the thing. And I had already, trying to be good, I had already measured out all of my dry ingredients and stuff for a double. So yeah. then when I used my double butter, I then had to wait for double butter to be softened again to finish my work. Well, and I don't know about you, but I've encountered when I've done this, of like now I'm running out of it because like a double portion, a exactly. double batter of a lot of these things, that's using up a huge amount of resources. Huge. So right now I have put a stick and a half of butter into this metal bowl. I'm going to put it in here and we are going to about to make some noise for the next Is that for the, just the vanilla buttercream, This right? is just for the vanilla buttercream. Yep. We're going to come back. We'll have to do a second one for the chocolate. Yeah, for a doodle. Yep. Because I don't think we could blend them together, right? No, no. Well, I'm sure we could, but there's no reason to. Yep. I've tried that. What I would be, would, would be fun if we pipe our buttercream this time around. If we did what? Pipe it. Pipe it? Yeah. Wait, what? Like, instead of uh, just, like, putting it on the cupcake, we could put it in a bag and then try to pipe it. Oh, that's what you mean by that. Yeah. All right, Adam, does it look even? Does any need more? This one needs more. That, that one might need a little bit more, but it's looking good. Okay. Do you guys eat the raw batter? Oh, I'm going to grab uh, another tray. Another tray. You got six more coming on. So, we actually don't have an ice cream scooper, so that's why I'm not doing it with that. I have seen some people do it with an ice cream scooper. It's a cool idea. But we're just using spoons. It works just as well. Oops! Butter! 
Or bada, bada bada, swing bada bada. Okay, that should be sufficient. Et voila. Et voila, and oh. do we want to put them in together? Good idea. Adam is very wise. I, I try on many things. So you know what I also like to do? Uh, what do you like to do? I like to see how many cupcakes a batter will make. Because I believe that this recipe says it'll make 12 cupcakes. And I like to know if that's true. Of course, it depends on what size cupcake you're making. But I feel like I want to race the recipe and see if I can make it make more. You know what I mean? I see what you mean. You always want to increase. You don't want to decrease. Yeah. You want to... You're you would say, create, you're never satiated. I want to create magical resources of cupcakes. Say again? I want to create magical resources of cupcakes. Magical resources of cupcakes. Even if that means I make them smaller, but I still have more cupcakes, I like that. I don't know if that entirely... I would prefer more cupcakes, even if they're smaller. What about you? Would, would you prefer, prefer less? I prefer a man's cupcake. The little baby cupcakes, the little like finger ones. Yeah. Not a fan of the finger cupcakes. Oh, the minis. Yeah. Mm. You know, I don't well, want. These aren't minis. No, no, these aren't. I I would not want cupcakes that would incon more cupcakes than would inconvenience me. If that makes sense. Oh no. Like if this produces more than eighteen, and we'd have to do another round of heated things <laughs> in here. Ah! <laughs> That, that would bother me. Oh, well, here, I got another spoon for you. Okay, I'm going to try something else, actually. Uh, the, the inconvenience of having to do a whole nother batch would annoy me way more. Oh, wow. That's good to know at this juncture. <laughs> We're making know. 18 right now? What? Is that the plan? We have 18. I we mean, have if the we capacity. have to, I'll go beyond it. But it would be... Then we have to do two things in the oven. It's... I understand. I like recipes being what they say they are. Yes, chef. Chef, yes. Ah, oh. It's getting crazy over here. I know. There's all this stuff on the floor. Adam, what if we have one more? We're not making one more. <laughs> timer. It's a timer. It's okay. We have to watch Big Moon now, though. What? Cupcake got on him. Oh, gosh. There's only... This is a this is a fiasco. That is, of course, Sleepyhead uh, by Passion Pit. Uh, Sleepyhead by Passion Pit. Now we're mixing in, of course, the confectioner's sugar, three cups worth of it. Uh, we're going to be coming in here. Uh, so this is cup number one. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, you know what I also like about our cooking project here? What? We're eliminating a lot of excess ingredients. Oh my gosh. That we are clearing. We're using the ingredients. We're not eliminating them. We're clearing house. Adam yeah. is stressed when we have a full fridge. No, I have He's I'm also stre stressed when we have an empty fridge. No, I'm stressed when we have so much in our fridge that I don't think we could eat it and it's going to rot. <laughs> yeah. When I was in college... I would, you know, when I lived in an apartment, you and I still always had the meal plan. I had like a smaller one as I advanced in years. So then I would also <laughs> buy food at the grocery store. And I remember it being a, a real confusing time for me because my mom wanted me to buy vegetables and fruits. Mm. I knew that was important. But when you're one person, like I had roommates, but we all kind of like different vegetables and fruits. So like... I was like, okay, if I'm going to buy grapes, I felt like I had to eat all the grapes that day. So if I bought grapes, I would finish the entire thing of grapes by the end of the night. Because I didn't want them to go bad, you know? I don't actually think that's a bad... I understand what it's you're saying. It's a lot saying. of grapes in one day is what I'm saying. It is, but it's also reasonable. Like, it's very difficult as a... Like, if you're for any person that's buying food like that on their own to get an appropriate amount. yeah. It's a, uh, I sympathize with that because when I was by my, living by myself and whatnot, it's very difficult to like get like because if you buy too little, it's such a bad deal. Right. Like even though like I don't always care about getting a deal as much. Yeah. Like even I know that that is such a terrible price versus the bulk. But like. Right. Okay, if I buy a box of clementines, like how many clementines can a person eat before they could like? I, I love clementines. I'll eat two or three a day, no problem. But yeah. like. 
you know, you have like 30 of them in this box. Like there's there's still a limit before they'll start rotting. It is a it's a brutal thing. Brutal That's thing. Tough. It is tough. Thankfully, my roommate, Stacy, at one point Stacey. for many years in college, she liked bananas when they were more like spotted and like brown. And I liked them when they were all yellow. So if I, at least for bananas, if I didn't finish all my bananas by the time they were going to get all like spotted and brown, she would finish the bananas. It was a really good system. How are we doing? Oh, wait, timer. Not bad. Timer. So, they are going to go for how long? 20 minutes, I think. Uh, Gabby, could you tell me how long it's, uh... Yes. Yeah. Timer's on. We got about three minutes here. Anna makes great icing. That yeah, follows the recipe very well. I always struggle. You know what I struggle with icing? What? I struggle um, with using the right amount of butter. Mm. It always feels like a lot, so then I always cut the butter down by at least like half a stick or something. But then what happens is sometimes it'll still taste good, but there's just not enough butter. Because I've literally taken out one of the Korean ingredients. That's sad. You never could go wrong with that. But on that note, we've got the icing is about to be finished. Uh, in the next few minutes, we could bring out the product at that time. Do we want to pause here? Yeah, let's pause. See you in a few. See you soon. Wee wee. Adam made beautiful vanilla buttercream. And Gabby made delicious chocolate. And look at how she ladled these cupcakes in. They are just cooling now, but we've got vanilla, chocolate, and cupcakes. And that's how you make it. Oh my gosh, that looks amazing. <laughs> that, that's how you make it. Uh, we'll post a finished picture on the grams on, I guess, my account. Uh, at Adam Yarrows. Thanks for joining us, guys. Woo! Yay! Bon appetit. Bon.